Hello everybody, my name is Flame and I'm gonna be bringing you today a video with the Havoc Demon Hunter Mage Tower Challenge Guide to unlock the Flame Reaper skin. Legion is going away guys, these type of challenges won't be available once Battle for Azeroth hits or maybe even the pre-patch, so if you wanna get them and you haven't so far, of course, obviously, you better grab these now and uh, with all the new item level boosts that we have, it shouldn't be that hard, so here's a really quick guide on how to get them in no time. And starting things off with the talents, uh, let's check them out really quick. Now the build that I use focuses on demonic, so you normally would get all the necessary talents except Chaos Cleave, which is going to be Bloodlet this time. And um, Unleashed Power, you're not going to get Unleashed Power, you can get Master of the Glaive, I find that it's a lot more useful. It does make your Chaos Nova still cost 30 Fury, which you need to keep that in mind for the first phase, we'll talk about that later. But uh, the two charges on uh, Throw Glaive for the add phase in the last part of the encounter is so be so much better with the Blooded as well. The focus of the talents is to give you as maximum sustain as possible and the damage from Demonic. So pick up Blind Fury at uh, 99, Demonic Appetite at 100, Blooded at 102, Soul Rending at 104, Nemesis for that boss burst at 106, Master of the Glaive, we already said that, and Demonic of course at 110. These are the talents now quickly check a look at the gear that I had uh, fairly standard for what you would do at this point in the game 930 item level I had the ring which is probably the best one of the best in slots for the havoc But I had this as well, which is probably not the best one that you can have but also helps as well and General gear that you might uh, might see as well. Of course other legendaries work gear um, It just helps you get the encounter uh, down a little bit quicker now, uh, in terms of food and buffs, um, I would recommend the crit food, uh, the higher the better, I had the 300 one. The flask as well for maximum agility, I also used the runes for extra agility as well. And uh, I didn't, I don't think I used the potion as well, potion of prolonged power, but I did use drums of fury, which you can make from leatherworking or you can find them in the action house. They basically give you a mini bloodlust, well 25% bloodlust. And um, you can essentially use them twice in the encounter, right? One right before you start, then one probably in the last phase of the boss where you need to burst them down. And this is uh, for the consumables as well. Of course, the higher item level, the better your gear is enchanted and gemmed, the easier it is, but it's not important. Now, let's get into the actual challenge itself. During the amazing RP session where the guy keeps talking, you can uh, actually eat. Buff yourself up, make sure that you have the flask, the food, and if you have runes, you can add them too as well. Now, as soon as he becomes targetable, of course, you will need to start a fight, and um, you will start with a fell rush or anything that can give you a little bit of fury. And what you want to do is you want to interrupt his cast so you can bring him closer to the middle and then I beam, and then just start smashing him with chaos strike until he does his ice shard. Now, after he casts a couple of frost bolts, he will do the first razor eyes phase where you're going to be surrounded by razor eyes shards, which you should not touch because they will one shot you. What you will need to do is chaos nova first so that you can stun and generate all of those soul uh, fragments really quick that will reset your eye beam and then double jump over them and after that fell rush back to uh, Zillum so that you can continue the fight. This particular phase will last until Zillum has spawned uh, these ice shards three times, after which he will transition to the next phase. Keep in mind, if you took the Master of the Glaive talent, um, the Chaos Nova will cost Fury, and if you don't have Fury, you won't be able to stun. It's not the end of the world, it makes it a little bit more challenging, but you can still double jump over them and go back to Zillum. After the Frostball phase, you will have the Arcane phase. Now, if you have the Weak Aura for the challenge, which I totally recommend, the DBM challenges add-on, I will post a link in the description, it will notify you when the next phase will start. Now, as soon as you see the Arcane phase, what you can do is immediately imprison Zillum. He will teleport, he will still be imprisoned, but it will make it easier for you to reach him without him having to damage you, or you can even see him easier when he teleports. To make this phase, which actually posed the most problems for me, a little bit easier for you guys to understand is that he will always teleport in the opposite half of the uh, encounter zone. 
So if you keep him really close to the middle, just look at the other side of the uh, zone and you'll eventually see him a little bit easier and then you just dash uh, as quickly as you can to him. If he's closer to the middle, then you can reach him in two dashes. If you don't reach him in two dashes, it will probably suck very much. The next phase will be the Shadow Barrage phase, which is actually one of the easiest uh, phases in the game. He will continuously spawn these uh, globes of shadow damage that will uh, race across the screen. They all go into the same direction, so you just need to dodge them. You don't need to DPS, it's not a DPS race, just make sure that you dodge as many, if not all of them, as you can. Now, after this phase, he will cast one arcane barrage which is fine you can let it go but very importantly he will cast draw power which you will need to interrupt as soon as you can either interrupt or imprison either way works just make sure that you interrupt ideally you want to interrupt so you can save imprison for his teleport phase so that he does he doesn't cast arcane barrage while you're running towards him it's important to interrupt the draw power cast because he gets a damage buff for every tick of the channel that he has and you do not want that because he's going to uh, nuke you down really fast. Now after this he will transition again and normally now it's the frost phase. Sometimes it can differ, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure that after you see the uh, phase change uh, notification from your add-on, you let him cast once and then you imprison because he will teleport and you will want to make sure that um, you can reach him in time without dying along the way. And this is the first phase of the encounter. He will keep doing these switcheroos, these phases, as long as you uh, damage him and take him all the way down to 10%. Once he reaches 10% of his HP, he will switch to the second phase of the encounter. In between phases, there will be a little bit of an RP going. You can eat, you can drink, you can do whatever you want during this time. Some people like to change their talents into a more single target focus build. Um, you can do that as well. You can keep using these talents. It worked for me, so it should work for you as well. Now, as soon as the second phase of the encounter starts, the boss will spawn and this is the real DPS race. You want to pop everything. As soon as he becomes targetable, pop I-beam, pop drums, pop potions, deal, him, deal the damage once I-beam goes away, you metamorphosis I-beam again and so on and so forth. The reason and repeat, you want to kill him as quickly as possible. Now what this boss does is he spawns shit on the ground that keeps expanding towards uh, you and it will try to encompass the entire arena. What you want to do in this phase is to try to bring him to the edge as much as possible and backpedal little by little so that you're not getting caught in the uh, shit on the ground because it will deal a lot of damage to you and you want to maximize the amount of space that you're going to be fighting this guy in so you don't want to run a lot just just a little just a few steps and you should be fine when you take the boss low enough he will start casting a channel spell towards you do not interrupt or stun or stop his cast for any reason you have time until he finishes the channel to move all the way across the other side of the battlefield because once the channel is over, he will spawn three little ads that will walk towards him. If the little ads reach him, he will get healed for a huge chunk of his HP and you probably won't be able to finish the fight in time before the entire zone gets encompassed by the dark shit on the ground. You will need to DPS the ads really quick. And uh, you want to give yourself as much room as possible, which is why you're going to be fell rushing all the way to the edge of the arena. Once the little lads are done, the boss will start running towards you. And what you want to do, you want to fell rush as close to the shit on the ground as possible so that you can continue doing what you were doing before, saving as much space as possible. And you will keep DPSing him until he starts to cast his little minions again. Usually you will get two or three casts per encounter, depending on how much DPS you have. A really efficient way to clear the ads is when they spawn you start doing some AoE, you put the artifact uh, ability down and a little after they start moving then you stun because once they spawn they won't walk immediately and you want to damage them as efficiently as possible to give you the most amount of time to take them down and get back to where you were before. And uh, this is the challenge guys, it's not very complicated, it takes a little practice to get everything done and time everything properly because there's a lot of management and a lot of things that you need to take uh, into consideration, but I think most people, if not everybody, should be able to do it uh, without too much trouble. So if you do have any questions or concerns, just hit us up in the comment section below. And if you liked our video guys, make sure to hit that subscribe button, it really helps us out and also enable those notifications so you can see when we put out a new video when it comes to World of Warcraft. Until next time guys, peace!